Hey. I'm ready for my trip. You're not seriously going to travel like that, are you? Why not? Oh, I think we should sit down and have a chat. Okay. Hello, everyone. Lourdes has asked us to talk to you about traveling for work. Remember when you were student at the university? Mm -hmm. What did you dream of? Uh, the hopes, the fears, the expectations. Those were the days. Mm. What was your dream when you were a student? Oh, well, I dreamt of traveling the world and, and visiting exotic places. Yeah, that was surely one of the most exciting things mm. I could think of at the time. Yeah. And then, if you're lucky and life goes on, you get your diploma, you get your first contract, you start working, and one day, it happens. You are going to travel for work and, of course, you're super happy because your dream came true. Yeah. And then you start thinking about the trip and, and then what happens then? Well, then we have to pack. Well, but you saw I already packed. <sighs> Rule number one, yeah. when at all possible, take only a carry-on. Mm -hmm. If you check in a bag, it could get lost or delayed. And then... You're stuck with whatever you're wearing on the plane. Ah, uh, no, you don't want that. No, you don't. Checking a bag also means a long wait at the airport when you arrive, and maybe your entire team is waiting for you on the bus. Oh, can you imagine that? Well, I have my trusty carry-on here, mm -hmm. and my backpack that I take with me during the day. Mm -hmm. First of all, think about the country you're visiting and what kind of job you have to do. It's not the same, for example, to visit a tuna canning factory in Ecuador, like we did, mm -hmm. then visiting the UN headquarters in Geneva. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same to walk around a gorilla reserve in Rwanda than visiting, I don't know, the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. True. The idea is to pack light, but of course you have to fit everything you need. First of all, uh, check the weather for where you're going. Maybe you're going to many different cities and they all have uh, different uh, seasons even. Mm -hmm. It's always a good idea to bring uh, sunglasses and a hat, even in winter. I like to bring this hat mm -hmm. because it covers my ears and my neck. Now, I know I look absolutely ridiculous, but the last thing you want when you're traveling is to be burned to a crisp. No, don't worry. You look fantastic. So what clothes should I pack? Well, you know the general rule in interpreting. You should look like the delegates. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> yes. You should look like the delegates. And when you're traveling, that's even more true. Mm, why is that? Well, because you're moving around as a group, so you need to look like a part of the group. For example, I hate wearing a tie, but when I'm traveling for work, I always wear a tie and a suit jacket or a blazer. But the moment their tie goes off, my tie goes off. <laughs> and what would you suggest for the ladies? Well, you know, uh, sometimes you may end up in receptions or... or dinners either because you are invited or because you and your colleagues have to work mm. and in that context something more formal might be handy personal personally i think that a little practice is always a lifesaver mm. and that takes me to heels mm -hmm. so think are you comfortable with heels well if the answer is no it's very simple don't take them with you life is too short to suffer however if you do they could be nice and glamorous because it doesn't hurt to look your best, right? So stylish but comfortable shoes. I think we can agree on that. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind, as we said, uh, what kind of uh, mission this is going to be. Because if you're going to be out in the fields counting sheep and cows, then you want to take your old sneakers and you can change into your form of footwear later on. Mm -hmm. Now, we learned from experience, didn't we? Once on the last night of a trip, oh. we were caught in a downpour. Yeah, that was terrible. We were soaked to the bone. Yeah. So always keep a clean set of clothes to change into, even on the last day of the trip, because we still have to work the following day. Mm. By the way, you don't want to know what my suitcase smelled like after those clothes spent 24 hours in a plastic bag. Oof, that was terrible. I don't want to remember that. Mm. Anyway, so you, you might want to dress in layers that you can peel off because you might be going from inside to outside and back again, and you might be going from cold to hot. Yeah, and remember that in some countries they just 
adore air conditioning. It could be super hot outside, but then you get inside and it feels like you're in a refrigerator. Mm. Talking about refrigerator, I'm thinking about food. Ooh. That's a very important subject. And our friend here is the expert in the matter. I had the chance to travel for work with him and I was amazed of how organized he is in that department. But first of all, I want to remember something my grandmother used to say. Yeah. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Oh, you know what? Grandma was right. She was always right. As traveling interpreters, we often face very long days. You might spend 12 hours running from here to there and you sometimes have to work through meals, so you don't have a chance to eat. That's why I suggest you hit that breakfast buffet and eat more than you normally do. It's the only meal you're guaranteed to have. Yes, indeed. And that brings me to another key word, snacks. Snacks. Snacks are very important. So I like to bring crackers. Here I have matzo crackers. They're very good because they don't go bad in the heat or in the cold. Yes, and they could be very handy on a rumbling stomach if you're on a boat or on a ferry. You know, I haven't thought about that. Yeah. That's a good point. I also like to bring nuts or raisins. And a piece of fruit like an apple or a banana. This is good to give you energy. But if you're traveling internationally, keep in mind that sometimes you're not allowed to bring fruits into other countries. Yes, it's Better to buy fruit once you arrive. Absolutely. And what about water? Your trusty water bottle is your best friend, but you might be traveling to a country where you can't drink the tap water. In that case, you can run to the corner store when you arrive and get yourself a couple of big bottles of drinking water so that you can take them along during the trip. Mm -hmm. Since we're talking about food, it might be interesting to talk about etiquette, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you may end up in a reception or a dinner and you have to remember something the clients are there to eat and drink but you you are there to work that's right you might be at a fancy lunch at an ambassador's house but you are at the office and often you have to work and interpret during these meals so you won't have a chance to eat however if they make it clear that you can help yourself to the food be discreet the last thing you want is to be seen stuffing your face at the buffet. <laughs> no, you don't want that, of course. Never forget your manners. Absolutely. And while I'm not here to tell anyone what to do, I humbly suggest that you stay away from alcohol. They might insist that you have a glass or two of wine, and they might say that you don't have to work. And then, and I speak from experience, five minutes later they'll turn around and ask you to do a consecutive. And you don't want to be tipsy when that happens. No. <laughs> and talking about consecutives, never forget your notepad and pens. Yes. That's very important. Always. Mm -hmm. And also, another important thing is a phone. We live in a world in which phones are vital. Mm -hmm. We use them to look up vocabulary, mm -hmm. to check documents that your client might have sent at the very last minute. It's even a warm up to get around. Mm -hmm. So what would you suggest if you travel to a country where there is no roaming? Yes, good point. When you travel overseas, uh, your phone might not have roaming or it might be extremely expensive and I do suggest that you turn off the roaming. So there are a couple of ways around this. One solution is to buy a local SIM card. This works sometimes, but not always. You could land on a Sunday and everything's closed. Or sometimes you land and you have to start working right away. Some countries don't allow visitors to get SIM cards. So a way around this that I found is to use an eSIM. Uh -oh. An eSIM? Never heard of that. Well, it is true that it's fairly new. Most phones these days are switching over to eSIM capability. It's basically a virtual SIM card that you mm -hmm. can download onto your phone. Mm -hmm. And then it works like a regular prepaid SIM card. Now, many uh, different companies offer this service, so you may want to Google which one is the best for where you're going. This can be a lifesaver because that way when you land, you're already online. Mm -hmm. You can order a taxi, figure out where you're going. By the way, you may want to look up which taxi or rideshare apps are in use in your destination. And we do rely too much on our phones. It is a good idea to print out your itinerary, uh, your hotel information, yes. some emergency numbers, because your phone could fail. Yes, yes, it could. And while talking about technology, never forget to bring your adapter. You have one? Yes, your adapter 
and a charger. Yep. And remember that plugs may vary from one country to another. Yes, I like this universal charger that has all the different plugs. But if you find yourself in a situation where it doesn't fit, a good tip is to take the USB end of your cable and plug it into the television set in your hotel mm -hmm. room. I actually did this recently when I landed very late at night and all the shops were closed and I couldn't buy a charger. Yeah, and never forget Murphy's Law. Oh mm. yes, if something can go wrong, it will. Yes. This is why you should have a survival kit. Oh yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So make sure you bring anti-diarrhea -di medicine, medicine for constipation, painkillers, mm -hmm. band-aids. Mm -hmm. You know, sunscreen is always a good idea. Yeah. Yes, indeed. If you have any allergies or medical conditions, you should bring anything you'll need. Mm -hmm. And uh, check, check if you need any vaccination for the country you're, you're visiting. And don't forget a valid passport. Very good point. Many countries require that your passport be valid for at least six months. So check that expiration date ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And you should also check if you need any vaccines like you mentioned or, or visas. Even if the organizer has told you everything you need, check yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're the one <laughs> getting on that plane. You're the one going through immigration. And the last thing you want is to be denied boarding or even worse, denied entry into a country just because you don't have the right paperwork. Oof, no, imagine. You don't no, want that. Absolutely not. And what about money? Good point. Uh, these days, you can pay by card in most places, but not everywhere and not in all countries. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea to bring some cash, preferably US dollars. In some countries, euros are good as as well. You can exchange a bit of the, of the currency ahead of time, but you usually get, get a better exchange rate after you arrive in the country, whether you exchange cash or withdraw from an ATM these days. And a note about cards, make sure you alert your bank about your upcoming travel so they don't block the card in the middle of your trip. Mm -hmm. And a good backup is to have your cards in your phone's virtual wallet. Mm, yeah. That actually saved my life once because I lost my wallet and thanks to my card in my phone, I could leave, basically, and I could pay my hotel bill, which is very important, of course. You know, I'm glad you mentioned the hotel bill. Often we have to pay for our hotel bills and get reimbursed. So check with your uh, recruiter. Some of them are very strict about what kind of invoice they need and what has to be on the invoice. So the day of checkout, I usually go down extra early to give myself plenty of time to deal with this. Keep in mind, there might be a line of people checking out in front of you, which could add, I don't know, 30 minutes to your <laughs> checkout. That's smart. Give yourself extra time. Now, if you're lucky, someday your work day ends early and you have a free afternoon or free evening. So you have free time. Yes, missions are long and tiring, mm -hmm. but if you're lucky, you might get a free day. So always double and triple check with your uh, recruiter that you're not needed. And if you do have free time, have fun. I mean, hit the beach. Yeah, don't forget your swimsuit. You can try the local cuisine, go on a walking tour. You know, it's a real privilege to travel as an interpreter. And often we have access to places that aren't even open to the general public. So mm -hmm. remember the saying, Work hard and play hard. Yes, live your dream to the fullest.